into the room. He is an enormous right-faced farmer in his 50s. He is dressed in overalls, a cap, and muddy boots. George has a craggy old face, and what little hair he has left is gray. <laughs> he talks lazily, as if leaning up against a fence on a warm day, but punctuates his speech with loud, infectious, but slightly demented laughter. Oh, hello! How are the lumbers? Ah, George, come in! I thought I'd drop over, saw the lights. Are you all right? Oh, don't mind me, George. Greg continues to hobble around in pain. George watches this, not quite understanding what's going on. Jan enters with the cloth, sees the mug on the floor, picks it up, and disappears into the kitchen again. So, Mr. Sanderson, this must be your new bride. Well, she's not exactly new, George. Well, I know what you mean, Mr. Sanderson. Very few of them are these days. <laughs> I'm liberal-minded, though, so uh, what the heck? <laughs> Jan enters and tries to rub the coffee stain off the fly of Greg's trousers. George observes this carefully. Greg tries to stop her. Uh, Jan, this is, this is George. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yeah, you've got your hands full there. <laughs> 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 stimulating, you know. Oh, hot chocolate? Oh, well, that, that brings me out in a rash. You do have some whiskey. Oh, now you're talking. Now, not too much, though. Just a, just a small mug will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Greg gets a bottle of whiskey out of the sideboard and goes into the kitchen to get a mug. Jan motions George to sit down, which he does. Oh, well, it's a good old house. Solid, no leaks or nothing. I bought it a few years back for my boy, Robert, but... Uh, He's not too keen on farming, so I just rinse it out. Anyway, Jay, I think he'll enjoy it here. The last bunch sure did. They may still be here now if it weren't for, uh, weren't for the ghosts. Ghosts? Well, I don't believe in them myself, Mrs. Sanderson, but these were city folks and they'd read too many books. What ghosts? Well, about 50 years ago, there was a ghastly murder took place in this very room. <laughs> yeah. it was, uh, yeah. She was a young woman, about your age. Who was that? Greg, there was a murder committed in this very room. Oh, that was a long time ago, eh? How fascinating. I hope you <laughs> folks don't believe in ghosts. The only thing I believe in is science. To me, a ghost is just a chemical in someone's brain. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. This house has scared off a lot of people over the years. And it's the ghosts that scare them, eh? And the blood. Blood? <laughs> yeah, there's, a, yeah, there's a red stain that appears on the floor. It, it was this young woman, they say. They found her body right there, lying, right there in blood. They say that whenever there's a murder around these parts, the floor turns red. Who murdered her? Well, the, the story goes like this. There was a hermit who lived up there where the quarry is now. He was deformed. Why, well, he was quite grotesque, apparently. I guess that's why he became a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> now the farmer who lived here sold the, menace, the mining rights to this company who wanted to start quarrying up there, but the old hermit though, he wouldn't move, so they drove him off. But that very night he crept back, he forced open that window, and he stabbed the farmer's daughter to death right in this room just before midnight. Did they ever catch him? Nope, never did. A lot of folks around here claim they've seen him. Surely he'd have died long ago. Well, this is his ghost that people see. They say you, you should never go up to that quarry at night, and you should never stay in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I shouldn't be telling you that, should I? <laughs>